guitarist. And I'm Lee from Andertons. And we're here at NAM 2015 with Adrian Emsley from Orange, the technical director of Orange Amplification. And we're going to look at new Crush amplifiers and OB1 bass amps. Sounds right. awesome. So, Aid, let's start with the Crush. Yeah. Um, take us through what you've done with the new sort of smaller Crush amplifiers. Yeah, so what we've done is, is we've uh, totally redone the gain structure compared to what they were. We've now got like a high impedance uh, analog solid state four stage lead channel with the the clean channel added as well, which is actually quite similar to the one on the Crust Pro, except they share the EQ. So the EQ section is shared mm -hmm. with with both the channels. So it kind of it, it kind of it, we could make it shorter and make it into a practice amp without having the amount of knobs on, a, on like a Crush Pro or a Rocker Verb, you know. Uh, you got also got the low impedance buffered effects loop on there as well. Obviously it's all solid state, it's all analog. The only thing that's digit was the reverb mm -hmm. and the tuner. You know. What's the, because that was a, obviously the, the, the sort of battleground, if you like, that is the practice amp market in all mm. the brands, Fender, Blackstar, yeah. um, all going for that sort of digital modeling kind of vibe. Yeah. You, you just thought there was kind of like a gap for someone to well, come along with a sort of yeah. more straightforward. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, if you keep it analog, you're not going through two stages of conversion. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be detrimental in itself, you know, and you, you'll get the slight latencies and it's, you know, and a lot of that stuff sounds good, okay, quiet in the bedroom. Yeah. But if you try and do a show with it, it doesn't really cut it. I did. Yeah, stuff. I mean, it changes when you start pushing speakers. I'm just trying to. That I, stuff sort of changes I think a lot. People yeah. there in YouTube land are going to see this video before the video that I've done with Chappers, where we review these amplifiers. Okay. But that was. These are unbelievably loud. We had the 20 and the 35 in it. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. Well, they got the. They got some. I mean, there's some gain there as well. So mm. I mean, for the bedroom guy, you know, if he wants to play with a load of gain and practice his sound what old licks, he can do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, well, I think we're in slight danger of getting kicked out by the noise we're police. We're hoping to, aren't we? We're waiting for the knock on the <laughs> yeah, door, the, well, the yeah. Hilton noise police. Yeah. Um, well, we've got a stand just over there, just for that. We've got a stand booth. You know, anyway, uh, <coughs> it's, yeah, so, so that's basically what we've done. We've totally changed the gain structure and updated is it. it is it fair to say that the gain structure is sort of rocker verb? Yeah, based? I mean, it is based on that, yeah. It's based on it. Obviously, the EQ is slightly different because it needs to work with that size speaker in that size case. So we've smiley faced it slightly more yeah. than you would on a rocker verb mm. because you've got a prominent mid range, yeah. you know. Uh, really, to compensate and suit the speaker configuration. You and, know. and what are the what are the models in the new Orange Crush range? So we've got the twelve. The twelve we kept the gain structure the same mm -hmm. because it, it was kind of like people liked them as they were. But what we did do is we. We improved the op amps in them, so we're using better op amps. Mm -hmm. So it's going to sound, it's that gain structure, but it sounds a bit better. Uh, we've also added cab sim on the headphone out, which is based on a 4 by 12 with like Voice of the World speakers, you know. So we've taken the curve of that cab and tried to recreate it using filters. So yeah. on the headphone out, on all of these, the headphone out's got that. So you can throw them straight from the headphone into a computer and record them. I think that's good because you know. one of the things with, uh, with practice And it's not a digital. There's nothing digital happening yeah. there apart from the reverb and the tuner, uh, you know, uh, uh, which aren't on. So you've got the 12 and then you've got the 20, which doesn't have the reverb and the tuner. We do one without that, but we also do one with it, which is the yeah. 20 RT, that's yeah. 35 RT, which is the same gain structure, more power, and on the 35 you also have the buffered effects loop as well. And a slightly bigger speaker, mm. I think. And they're all channel switching. The channel switch, are 20, <coughs> the 20 and the 35 are channel switching as well. So any latching foot switch will switch channel, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 as they would on like a Cross Pro or a Rocker Verb. Yeah, what I was just going to say about the, the headphone, it kind of took me back to using solid state practice amps as a kid and the headphone out was always just completely unusable because yeah. there was no cabinet yeah, yeah, emulation yeah. Yeah. and after about five minutes it was just yeah. frying your ears so yeah. I think that's yeah. a great idea yeah. for yeah. home yeah. practice. Yeah. This from, I think the first amp I ever owned mm. was a 12 watt Marshall practice amp and this is going back, a solid state, going back um, you know, late 80s yeah. um, and I do remember my brother played drums and I remember being able yeah. to jam with him with that amplifier which is something I don't think you can do with any of the digital modeling kind of the no, small ones no. that just haven't got mm. the power but 
uh, I haven't tried the 12 of this, but the 20 of this, as I said, just had bucket loads of... Yeah, they're quite loud. Power. They're quite loud. But also yeah. very usable, because it's solid state, you yeah. know, if you want it yeah. as low as possible. I mean, whilst I've got this plugged in, uh, thank you to the chaps at Vanquish Guitars for lending Orange this rather uh, spectacular... Uh, I don't know what it is, it's sort of like a hybrid of a telly and a Les Paul with a Bigsby on it and all sorts. And, um, neck like very, a cricket bat. Neck like a cricket bat, which I'm, I'm loving. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can get some nice clean sounds from this. Um, the tone all the way down, I have. And as you may have heard in the little jam that Aidan and I just did impromptu, it's got plenty of naughtiness. It's that extremely not, late. <laughs> that does not instantly jump out as um, that's a solid state sound, does it? Really? No. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty low volume now as well here. There's no, uh, there's no back to back diodes happening in that at all. If anyone knows what that means, please feel well, free a lot to of, comment. A lot of solid state <laughs> things that distort things, right? Pedals, etc. Gain structures on solid state practice amps have what's called back to back diode clipping in there somewhere. But they basically squeeze the signal through these two diodes, one facing one way, one facing another, and it's wired in. And that will just clip that to sort of two volts or whatever right. it is. And, you know, everyone uses it. We're, we're, we try not to use that in anything, you know. So, so they, these are literally four stages of solid state gain, the way a tube amp would be. <coughs> uh, running at the same impedance as a tube amp would be on that part of the circuit as well. So, Very cool. uh, like the pot values would be the same as a rock oh, really? channel. Yeah. Do you know, it'd be like one meg, dual gang, you know, you'd have like a B250, you know, a, a, the base would be like an A500 mm. or something, do you know. All of which, I guess, contributes to making it behave more, much well, more like a Well, it behaves band. much yeah, yeah. more like that the, mm. the, the tube amp would because it's only the device that's actually different. Yeah. So you kind of coax the device into working a bit more like a tube mm -hmm. in a tube environment. Uh, and it's, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it <coughs> So that's the new Crush Pro range, which, again, if you look in the description below, I'll put some uh, links into where you can find out more about some of the smaller ones and things like that. Um, but never let it be said uh, that we never do anything for bass players, although, to be fair, we never do anything for bass players. Um, <laughs> what's this? This is the OB-1 <laughs> yeah, OB 500. Uh, we've got an OB-1 300. Same physical size, a little bit lighter, possibly smaller donut transformer, you know. Uh, less output devices, but it's class AB, the output device. It's solid state, it's all solid state, it's all analog. Uh, it's not class D, it's, it's class AB. I like the sound of it better and the way it responds. We, we were talking about that just before. I remember yeah. um, when early PA amplifiers started adopting the class D technology because yeah. it was so much lighter than the class AB yeah. technology. Yeah. And um, although you know very loud and everything like that, it had a slightly unpleasant hardness to the bass end um, mm. that I didn't like. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of manufacturers said again, you know, it was fine for sort of the lower end, real small stuff. But once mm. you get into the pro stuff, I, I don't know how much class D technology has changed. But yeah. I certainly think you can hear on this that the warmth and the growl on the bass. Yeah, end. I mean, we wanted it to sound, you know, more kind of classic, really. Give us uh, a, bit some, more uh, a bit more musical, you know, but it's still, I mean, obviously this amp has the, this, this is the clean section, so this is like plus minus 10 dB EQ boost cuts here, you know, it's an active EQ, this is the clean volume. You can also blend in some filth, uh, <laughs> this is filth, the amount of filth you've got, should we, should we have and this, is, this yeah. is the blend, the blender uh, control which blends in, <laughs> and that can be foot switched in as well, so if you're in a band with a couple of guitar players with half stacks and you, the, song, the singer hasn't written a song properly 
<laughs> and uh, you need something more to happen than the guitarists are adding to that chorus when yeah. it kicks in. You know, <clears throat> you need some kind of lift from somewhere. Just kick that in. Do you know what I think is really useful for as well for three, for three pieces? Because yeah. like you know, a lot yeah. of people. Or two know, pieces. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pieces, but but, you know, but for a three piece, where if you're the guitar player and you're going into some sort of lead part yeah. or something high up, and all of a sudden the balls drops out of the yeah. whole mix, whereas with yeah. that you're going to fill up those frequencies that usually there's. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. I mean, it it, it get, adds another wall of mid range mm. to if it's a rock. I think that that royal piece, blood kind you know. of vibe has mm. been. Um, two remember, pieces, the new black yeah. at the moment. Well, I remember I remember driving down. I was driving down the. Three in England, uh, Radio One, which doesn't normally play much rock stuff. This tune came on; it just completely blew me away. So I was like, waiting to the end of the tune. DJ didn't say who it was, so I pulled over and literally went onto their website to find out who it was. And this band called Royal Blood, and I was thinking that is a fat sound. And then, and then I found out a few weeks later that there's just two of them in the band. Yeah, and you just go, yeah, that doesn't make yeah. any sense at all. Mm, yeah. um, but let, yeah, let's hear this. Can I do? By the way, have you got a strap line for? I'm assuming this is help, the amp you're me, looking for, no, Obi One. Help me, Obi One, yeah, isn't it? Help sort of. me, Obi One. These are not the dro droids you're looking for. Yeah. Um, well, can we do any of that? We get sued by Lucas World or whatever. Yeah, he's he's well, not that, litigious that, you know, at all. It's fine. <laughs> let's, hope this, let's hope these are the droids people are looking for. Uh, yeah, I like it. My, that would be um, my favorite. Okay, take so. Out. If we uh, if we adjust the uh, sideways flying spaceship control, like sideways this, flying and then the spaceship, polo yeah. mini. say whilst you're playing won't come out. No. Yeah. So, no, no, no. Um, so that, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so this is so the, we need a lip read. We'll so, this is, <laughs> so this is the clean side just playing around with the EQ there. Slightly concerned point. about our proximity to the San Andreas fault right now. <laughs> <laughs> like so, so uh, the EQ double <coughs> locks, like plus minus 10 dB uh, active backs and all. EQ. And what, what if we introduce some of a snake being shot with an arrow? What the snake there? being <laughs> shot with an arrow will introduce harmonic distortion. Oh, awesome. Well, only if the blend is turned up. Okay. So, so uh, if we put. Actually, the blend with no. Snake shot with an arrow is quite nice for sort of. <laughs> kind of EQ at 12 there, you know, so you're getting a kind of really growly harmonic, because the harmonics are starting to kick in, you know, you're starting to excite the, the, the upper harmonics. I don't normally like bass demos, I sort of get yeah, a bit bored, uh, I'm sorry about that bass bass, but this is awesome. It's great, so, I really yeah, like so this one. So if you back that blend off and then bring some gain in. Yeah. That in and out, you know, on top of the clip. Keep it clean now you want it, and just have that. So, the, so there's two versions, <coughs> two versions of this, mm. uh, a 300 and a 500 watt version. Uh, all yeah. rack mount, both rack mount, are they? Yeah, two U rack mount. Yeah. 
Uh, you got balanced DI output, I just seen on the back. Yep. Well, what's the cab that we're using? That's just a regular, our regular 410 cab. A 410. Mm -hmm. And presumably this will run into um, smaller uh, cabs if you want it, to. Yeah, we are doing a, an isobaric, an updated version mm -hmm. of our last isobaric cab. That's where Which, you've got the two speakers. That's correct, that yeah. Uh, one behind the other, isn't it? We've elongated it so that this head looks better on top of it. Right. Uh, we've increased the internal volume and we've gone over to eminence speakers on there mm. uh, for no extra cost. They're worth checking out, those isobaric cabs, because yeah. um, you see it's this actually cab. Better than, it's much better than it's been before. Really? Because they're, they're, they're really small it, yeah. with a huge power handling, yeah. and but you've got, I mean, I'm sure if you, Adrian could explain if we had a bit longer, the science behind it, but essentially it's, it's a speaker in the front and then another one directly behind that speaker, but they're both sort of yeah. moving. So yeah, they're both in phase um, and push. It sounds you know. massive. Mm. Uh, so they're very cool. We've improved on that now. You know, the new one sounds a lot better than the old one. Uh, for no extra cost, it's the same price. It's so uh, it just looks better with this head on because the other one was more for the terrible. It was quite small, wasn't it? Good, yeah. yeah. So it's um, wider and lower, you know, but uh, and, and we 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 you know we we've managed to get eminent speakers in it, which is much better. Now than we're using in the, you know. this this last bit is a complete NAM exclusive, and perhaps something where you viewer people out there may even have uh, a part to play in Orange's decision as to whether or not to actually make these. But uh, what do we think of this? Well, this was something that Charlie and I were playing around with before we came out. Uh, it's called an O base, and the idea is that it's uh, kind of cool looking 60s vibe sort of thing. Uh, one of the bases that was on brand, it's going to be not a base pack, it would be we'd sell this as base in a, in a decent padded gift bag for a reasonable price. But when you say, uh, I mean, you, you were sort of what, two, two fifty. Yeah, roughly that kind of price, yeah. That's yeah. English pounds, obviously. Yeah, probably 250, <coughs> I would have thought. Something, something around there. But you're sort of gauging yeah. the still, interest. We, yeah, in the show, we're just gauging you? the interest, you know. So there you are, uh, in the comments section below, vote either yes, make it, it's awesome, or no, don't do it, I don't like it. It kind of looks like it should choose. be a short scale, but it's not, it's actually a full scale, do you know? We, we were playing around um, before this, just not plugged in, and, it, and it's got a growl to it. Yeah, it, it does sweet? growl really well, and it sustains nice as well, as you can see, you know. Mm. Base meets Rickenbacker a little bit. Well, it's direction. kind of got that. Yeah. It's kind of got that. You know, it sustains really well. Mm. But it does. This body does kind of work for sustain. You know, very simple. Uh, Three different colours potentially. Black with a white plate. Uh, cool. This should have had a white plate. No, that's a that is a happy accident then because uh, black plate looks better. Okay, well, I think you need to see this with a white plate. Okay. Uh, and the white should have had this plate, but it's turned up with an orange Show them the plate. seahorse, and then... Well, the, what, the, the, it's somewhere? actually a, it was a, a Formula One circuit. Formula One circuit. Fictitious Formula yeah. One circuit. <laughs> but it's actually, uh, you know, so it you looks like a seahorse. seahorse shape as well. And if you hold it the other way up, then people on YouTube can tell us what that looks like. What was that guy that did the thing where you, that you, you see a shape? Rat, yeah. Begins with our I don't know. famous it psychiatrist. Needs to be held, you needs to be held yeah, to, you've got to say the first yeah, thing yeah. that comes into your head. It needs to be it held to be the right way up. It's you know. that Not scene in Ghostbusters, though, <laughs> isn't there, where Bill Murray's doing it anyway? Yeah. Sorry, we've, we've digressed there. Sorry, <laughs> quite we're badly. Yeah. Back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think we're done so, then, aren't we? I think we are. So yeah, I guess it's just. Uh, you know, when are those available, how much are they and all that stuff, isn't uh, it? These so, are yeah. shipping as we speak. Yes, I think by the time we get back to uh, sunny uh, England, these Shire, will be these shipping will be in March. I like it. In quantities. Uh, you don't have to buy them in quantities. We you might get a few before that, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, these are all on order for Andertons as well, so do pop down to your favourite musical store in Guildford in Englandshire. Try an OB1, try a Crush, try anything you like. Um, but for now, I've been Lee. I've been Chris. And I've been Aid. Look at that, we didn't even rehearse that. This is professionals. Nice shirt, by the way. <laughs> you know we bring you all the NAM exclusives here, and this is another product that may or may not ever happen, but I've never seen this before. How about a cable? Can I unplug you? Yeah. We're going to make a massive noise. Yeah, let's turn that down. So this cable, no matter how much this end twists around and around and around and around, this end doesn't twist at all, so it can never really get tangled up because Orange have done some sort of wizardry, pokery style thing where 
the signal, the connection still stays. You said it had what ball bearings and magic. There's bearings, and it's <laughs> and it's it's, uh, it's a it's a kind of uh, magic. It's a make or break in three places on every you know yeah yeah. yeah. It's, it's so there you are. If you think that's a cool idea, well again. Just say in the comments section below, because Adrian's going to read every single one and personally reply to each of you. He's already told me that before. But if that's a cool idea, then you might see that in the yeah, show. It stops cables well. from tangling as bad. That's the idea, you know, if you're walking around in circles on stage. Awesome. Yeah.